Have you wondered how to own your own sexuality? I'm here with Jet Applane from JetNormMuse.com, and I'm Kathy Martelli from TheIntimacyDojo.com. And Jet, you're so amazing on stage, and I know you've danced all over. You you, you were just in Europe. You're, um, you just seem so natural and authentic when you move and you just own who you are, and it's really delightful to watch. I was wondering if you have anything to share, tips and pointers, because like you said earlier in the, the first video we did on this, everyone can own their own stuff. Um, you can either, you have a choice, you can be a victim or you can be out there and own it, which I think is so powerful and true. And different people are coming from different places in their lives. The journey might be longer for some people than others. And for people that are really shy, there's people that have been abused or just never had anyone encourage them. It could be, it can feel like impossible, like they don't even know where to start. What would, do you have any things you would suggest for them? Well, I don't necessarily uh, have a starting point, a jump off point. I do, I would say that when it comes to dance specifically, what I've learned uh, over the years, and my brother and I had this conversation a long time ago about how when you watch men, men in this country have been socialized to uh, not quote unquote uh, look or act gay. Yes. This is how men have been socialized. Yeah. And so because of that, when you see a lot of men, you know, uh, they're, they're usually, and I'm saying usually because I don't want, you know, Washington to feel like, oh, but I'm not, uh, usually sort of uh, reserved when it comes to expressing emotion. Uh, and then that also manifests on the dance floor. Yeah. So no Very matter how, much, how they feel about a song, there's still, like, like you mentioned, this sort of stiffness where it's like, oh, well, I still want to, you know, be uh, as manly as possible while I enjoy this song. And, <laughs> right? and so because of that, they can't just forget about how they may be perceived by someone that is watching and just dance and be free with it. Yeah. And so uh, what I've learned over the years is that if I watch someone that does have that freedom on stage where they don't care about how they may be perceived is like, oh, well, I can't do that move because that move looks gay. Uh. And so for those that don't care about that and they just get up there and move, those are the people that I want to watch dance. Yeah. So over the years, I've tried to become that in the sense that I want to move my body in a way that feels right for the song, right. in a way that feels right for the, you know, the next reveal that I'm going to do in burlesque or something like that. But not, I don't want to limit myself and, and constantly think about, oh, well, if I move this way, they may think X of me. Right. So you you're know? looking inward and rather so, than outward. Say again? You're looking inward rather than outward. You're looking at what you want to do rather than how they might perceive you. Right. Yeah. And, and this this person who I am no longer friends with because of what she said, uh, she said to me, uh, are you ever worried that someone will see you perform and think you're gay and then they'll go home and jack off to you. This is what she said to me and I was blown away. I was just like, that's the dumbest shit I've ever heard for starters. And it just, there were other problems with that yeah. that relationship, but still her saying that, it made me realize I'm like, number one, score. Somebody went home and jacked off from my performance, I'm fucking winning. If someone, <laughs> if someone enjoyed it so much they got sexual pleasure, that's wonderful. Yeah, right? And then number two, um, Going back to what I said in the previous video, I have no control over what people think, how they perceive what I do. Right. I only know what I want to present, and they're going to perceive what they perceive. So again, fuck it, right? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I, I need to remind, remind myself. I think I'm always trying to protect other people from what I'm afraid they might feel if I am a certain way in the world. And I know for a lot of shyer people, that's part of my dialogue all the time. So... Um, what about like even when you dance like your looks are very sexual they're not like I really love how you dance because I've been I've watched some shows where it kind of felt invasive when the people were looking at me it didn't feel like it feels like you own your sexuality without putting it on somebody else and I was wondering what your thought process like how do you do that well um, I saw this I saw this show I'm not going to name it um, the dancers were very talented but what they were doing was extremely stereotypical for male strippers. They were basically 
pulling women out of the audience and flipping them upside down and putting faces in crotches and, and, and humping and all this stuff. And my number one thought was, where's the consent in yeah. this? And then aside from the consent, it was just, uh, then I started thinking about liability. I was like, what happens when you drop somebody on their head? What the fuck are you doing? Or if they have a you bad know? back and you just flip them over upside down. And Right, yeah. And, I, and so I was just sitting there like, yeah, I never, ever want to be that on stage. I never want to, you know, uh, just start humping on people like a rabid dog. And, and so when it comes to the looks that I give, um, where those looks come from... Um, a personal rule of mine on stage and that rule is never try to be sexy oh. it's kind of like the improv rule mm-hmm. the improv rule is never try to be funny because you won't be funny right if you try yeah right and it's the same thing with being sexy every time in the past when I've tried to be sexy when I got off stage without fail there was some friend of mine in the audience that had known me for years and they were like oh man that was hilarious oh. and it's the total <laughs> opposite like, of what you were trying to do yeah well, like that's that was uh, okay. Again, that's their perception. I can't fight them on yeah. it, right? But still, I um, that was when I learned. I was like, never try to be sexy. Just get up there and do you know tell the story that you tried to create when you choreograph this. And so again, that's what I tell myself. You know, so yeah. I get up there, I tell a story, and in telling that story, that narrative that's in my head, the look that you see, I'm just telling the story. Oh. I'm not trying to be sexy. If I were trying to be sexy, then I start helping people in the audience. Wow. Wow, it was. I just was very impressed though how how powerful the like your acting is when you're up there, and the emotions. So that's interesting. So what if you if you're not on stage and you see someone you're interested in, do you use that kind of look as well, or how do you approach people? Oh, I don't. I don't approach people. Oh. I um, <clears throat> and and that's because that's for a lot of reasons, but um. You know, we, I often joke with friends of mine about pickup lines, yeah. but I don't have a pickup line because I've never used a pickup line, and I, nor do I expect a pickup line to ever work. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure they work for other people and good for them, but as far as seeing an attractive person and then just jumping off from there, no thanks. Yeah. And it's usually because um, I've been dating for a really long time. I went on my first date when I was 11. Oh, wow. Okay. So, <laughs> so in all of those years of dating, I have... Um, I found that the people that either come up to me or that I'm introduced to through mutual friends at a party or something like that, there's going to be a much better foundation of just easy conversation as opposed to, um, oh, that woman's attractive. Let me go and say hi. Yeah. Every time I've done that, and and when I say every time, we're talking about I can count on one hand. Um, I say three out of five times. Uh, she didn't speak English. Oh no! <laughs> and, I, and I was like, "See, that's exactly why I told you at home just to not not do this." And sure enough, you know. So you don't? Do you ever use? Say you're hanging out with some friends that you're um, that you some mutual friends, and you're interested in being sexual with them. Do you ever use looks or body language to signal that, or is it always a discussion? I know. No, it's a discussion. I mean, we just because I, I I believe let's just let's just talk. And there's so many people that have this mentality I hear them talk about it and they're like oh well isn't that a bit of a buzzkill to you know talk about it as if it's a business meeting and I'm like well if you think that's a buzzkill then the buzz wasn't really there yeah, you know that's a good so point. <laughs> so I, I think um, there there have been and then also I'll never forget this is something I feel like it's appropriate to mention this at this time I've always believed in asking a woman before I kiss her for the first time and um, I remember a woman I dated like this is probably 20 years ago and she kind of reprimanded me and she said, don't ask. And she kind of rolled her eyes as if me asking was this ridiculous thing. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, but I don't really, when it comes to that sort of thing, like me connecting with your body physically, uh, vibes aren't going to cut it for me. I need to know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll sometimes <laughs> think there's something there, but if I ask, they're like, no, or I'll think it isn't there. And people are like, I've been hitting, I've had dates where I didn't realize there were dates until a couple of years later. I'm, right. People have to use their words with me because I don't always get it. Right. No, I love that. Um, can we come back and talk a little bit more about consent? Yeah, totally. If you have questions or comments, please leave, leave them below. We'd love to hear. Congratulations on taking this time for yourself and learning these things. If you'd like to follow more of this, you can subscribe to my channel here. 
social media is up here, and there's more videos of this type here. See you soon.